Hello and welcome back to another tutorial where we learn how to program a city to evaluate it and make a dashboard if you make any changes, what kind of impact it has. This is all under the idea that you learn how to code. This is the Latin of our days. We have to learn how to evaluate and understand algorithms, otherwise we're going to be slave to them. I'm going to use City Engine, a platform from Esri, which allows you to um, use a bit of code to generate a city. And not just that, it also has implementation that allows you to incorporate shape files. When you open City Engine, the first thing you get is an empty scene. That means you have an infinite plane where there's not much to see around except for the sky and the center point. On the left side, you have the scene, which is also empty because you don't have any objects. On the right side, you have nothing to inspect, so that's it. On the top, you see all of the tools if you need them. For example, you can use it for zooming in and out, zooming in and out, moving around, or rotate. What we're going to do today is we're going to create a city based on some information we already have uh, in shapefile format. We're going to import a shapefile. So we go into File, Import, and I'm going to choose Shapefile Import. Building Footprints. There we are finish we have to choose what kind of projection we have I know the one we are using so I'm using this one and what we have now all of the building footprints already highlighted that means we have them we can also we see something else happen we have here in the inspector we've now suddenly new elements we have reports we can look at the attributes they have see they are all of the information we need and we can also see that we are currently collected 22,088 individual shapes or building footprints. What we are going to make is a procedural model. That means we are starting at a seed and then create out of that volumetric or other elements. In City Engine, you have to start with creating one of these rule files, file new. We create one of these CGA rule files and we're going to call it rule one. A new element popped up here on the left side with a start, a header, which is not read by the computer software. It's commented out. You can see this with these um, little asterisks. And the only thing which it says is it has a certain version, which is the version of the software. It doesn't do anything. And that's that's okay because we actually want to assign this to all of our elements here. We're gonna assign this rule to these lots. And it gives me an error because it doesn't have a start rule. So we have to change this. What is the start rule? We have defined it here as lot. So we write in the code on the left side, L-O-T, and we add two dashes and an expression mark. That is it. That's the start. Here's the C. This is where your code begins. And after this, you can say something like extrude and a height, five. We save it and we assign it again. Let's see what happens. It accepts it, it thinks a little bit, and every time we change something in the code and want to see what it does, we have to press Generate or Command G. And something is happening. Let's zoom into them. And what you see is that all of the building footprints have been extruded by five 
probably five meters. Now this is interesting because this is actually where your code is working. So this is the executable part of your program. So I'm gonna make something which is commenting. So I'm commenting what the individual elements of the code are doing. I'm always starting with a couple of hashes because that's like a header, so I know it's happening. And that's execution. And since we have so much information about our building footprints, for example, we know the height. We know the height and we don't need to have like a absolute height of five meters. We can just use the height, which is here. So to actually use this, we have to first create a variable. It's called the attribute and that's called ATTR. And then we use height and we have to give it a number. So we say it's zero and that's it. And you see the code already saw that this is a something special and it ma I made it blue. So this is great. And now we extrude it based on that. So instead of using five, we're using height. I press generate again and see what happened. Always save and then generate. And then voila, nothing goes up anymore. If I put a hundred there or a thousand or a hundred, it's generated again. It's all quite tall. Now we don't want to have that this height is just a height which we hard code, hard code which you write it into the software. We want to have it that it is something we can actually change. So instead of having just a number here, we connect it to an attribute. And that attribute can come from different layers. So we have different layers, for example, one could be the land use and map, the other one could be the building footprint. And we say building footprints. And what kind of attribute do we want to use? The height. Let's see what happens now. We save it and we generate it. Up here, you see generate has a different color. That means it's working, it's doing something. Et voila. What you see is that we suddenly have this CBD view that they are areas which have not, not much height. It's very residential and the CBD with lots of high and tall buildings. So that actually works. So we have the height now connected to the underlying attribute of height. That's great. So what you see here in the code is that you have a part which is executed and the other part, which is variables. Now we want to generate something which is called a function, a method which is going to check something. So I want to colorize now the buildings according to their land use. Land use is defined here in the attributes as different, let's say, commercial. So we're going to use this and if it has this color, commercial, I'm going to color it red. So there is a function, make the color. So color, and we're going to call it FF000. Colors in City Engine are sometimes defined as hexadecimal codes. So this is FF000, which is 100% red, no green, and no blue. Let's see, let's save this, and let's see what happens. This one building which I selected is now red, because I only had that one selected when I generated. Let's generate the whole thing again. And all of the buildings are turning red. So what I actually want is that the computer understands that only to colorize commercial buildings. I do this by generating a new function. You start with const, constant, and we call it something, get building function, 
elements always work the same. And I write that down, comment it out. It works the same. It's like if building has a land use commercial, assign color, whatever you like. I'm going to make this a bit wider so we can see what I write. In the case, I make cases now. So in the case where land use is exactly two equal signs, commercial, then we make the color red, no blue, and no green. Otherwise, we always end with an else. We just return white. White is 100% red, 100% green, 100% blue. Great. Hmm. We have now a couple of problems here. The computer tells us that we haven't generated something. We have an explanation mark and a, a cross. A cross is really bad. No such function as land use. Hmm. This comes up because we haven't created an attribute called land use. It doesn't know what it is, so we have to give it something. Attribute is land use and since land use is going to be connected to the value over here it's actually a string so we're going to call it, call it like two little parentheses et voila the thing is done you see the error has gone away we still haven't actually used this function because down here when we define the color it is still a number, like it's already generating a red. So we're going to copy this function and put it down here. That means when it gets to that point, when it goes from lot, it extrudes it and then tries to color it, and then it goes up again into this function. Of course, you're going to say that that's not going to work. Why? Because this value here, land use, has not yet been connected to the underlying attribute. We have to do that again here, exactly the same way how we did it with height. Connect to attribute. We use a layer, the existing footprints, and then it's this very obscure mesh 5MB underscore C. Okay. We have select everything and we generate. Ah, oh, generate. Let's see. And what you can see is that. The whole city is now a checkerboard of red and white because all of these buildings have commercial in them, CBD mostly, and out of there, there is no commercial. This is how you can make a volumetric land use plan. The next thing that I would like to make is that we are colorizing the building according to height, exactly the same way as you do before. So instead of having color get building function, we copy paste and comment out. And we make exactly the same thing, get building function, get building height. And of course, it throws me an error because we don't have such a thing. And then there comes a little trick. If you have a function already prepared, which it does uh, something similar, you just take it, the existing function and copy paste to create something similar. So get building height now. And instead of using the land use as a case, we're using height as a case. And we want to say like height smaller, say two. If height smaller two, then it's going to be red. And we're not just doing it red, we're going to do it in different cases. So we have height smaller 
five. And change the color after that. Then seven. Twenty. Forty. And now we can just change this into like one, two, three, four. We save it and generate. Uh, of course, we have to select first all of the building footprints so the computer knows which ones we actually want to generate. And what you see is that the lowest buildings have now red and the higher it goes, the less it has. But height seems to be not the right thing. We might have to change it into more different values. For example, floors. Let's do it by floor number. So we add, instead of having just the height, we say attribute floors equals zero. Save it. We connect the floors to the attribute again. Attribute to layers, footprints. We connect it to the number of floors. OK. Instead of having the height, we use floors. Oops. We copy the floors. And we make the contrast a bit starker. Save and generate. And voila. It's a bit hard to see. I might have to even increase it more. So the thing is now, you see that you can add new functions and how to adjust them. What you want to have is that at the least number of elements are hard-coded. Instead of having variables hard-defined down here as number of floors, you want to have them maybe up here. So we make here a subheading for um, functional variables. And we make these height variables. So building, sorry. Atro building height one equals two. And don't make abbreviations which you don't understand. So BLD, HIT, or whatever you want to do, don't do that because you will totally forget what it actually means. So let's copy this a couple of times. Make this number three, four, and five. Make this 10, 20, 40, 50. And copy that down here. Let's see how that works. I press generate again, save and generate. And I also adjust that the highest number is actually also a red. And voila. The higher the building, the brighter they are. Great. Now we get to the part where I would like to generate something like a report. 
How many square meters do you actually have in this city? How many floors are actually in this city? How, what's the distribution of buildings? So for example, if you go in here and, to, and uh, select all of the shapes, you can see that there is reports, but there is no report. For this, they created a function. And this function is called report. And report works like this. You add a string, number of buildings, and every time it comes to this point, it has to do what? It adds one. This is a very, very, very simple um, report. It just counts the number of buildings. I save, I generate, control S, control G, et voila. We have now a building report. And yes, the number of shapes and the number of buildings is exactly the same. Maybe we want to make a little bit a more intelligent report. We count all the buildings which have a certain height or a certain number of floors. And exactly the same as we did it before, we generate a function. So these are functions. Let's make a heading again so that we know where we are. And we generate a function which is creating a report for all of the individual building heights. We make a const and we call it report building by floors. Oh yeah, floors. This works a little bit different because a function like this needs to have a element of information. And that element of information is defined like these attributes which it takes into account are in this bracket. We say floors. Then we define exactly the same as we did lot. We create a function and then it executes whatever comes after. So we make a case when floors is greater or smaller than building one, what does it do? Floors smaller than building height one, it creates a report and we say buildings dot smaller two. Uh, so we call it buildings two. And it should count them. So we say one. So this is, you can see that it's exactly the same way as we did the color above. So we just copy exactly the same thing below. remove the first line, but then we generate exactly the same things here. So we have report, 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 and the report. And we call them building height 2, 10, 20, 40, and 50. We save it and it gives us an error. Hmm. The rule is apparently unused. Exactly. So what we do, we make here, we, we make, we call exact that function down here and we save by what? We also want to add floors because this floors down here gets handed over up here and then compared to the building heights. Let's see what happens. We save and we generate. We have now buildings, buildings 10, 2, 20, 40, and 50. And of course, they are all counted and add up to exactly that number. So this is the way you create an intelligent number of reports. It shows us that there are around 8,000 buildings which are smaller than two, which only have two floor, less than two floors. If we change this to, let's say, three floors, 
save and generate, that number changes dramatically. Melbourne is very driven by these one or two story developments. 16 out of 22,000 buildings are below three floors. That's quite stark. And this is really within a three kilometer radio from the CBD, so that's not really far away. Medium rise below 10 is very uncommon. You might say, well, that's very interesting, but we want to actually have more information about this. We want to have the building height, not just that, we want to have how many square meters of land use is actually in there. So instead of just reporting one building, we can also just call the area of the, of the building. So that is geometry dot area. And of course, multiply it with the number of floors. That gives you the course floor area. Oh, what's, the, what's the opposite of net again? Net plus tar, that part. I save it. Oh, forgot one. Have to do that one again. Here we go, save and generate. And what you see here is the report has a sum. It's not just the number of elements, but the sum of it. So let's make this bigger. And you can see that the building area is much more homogeneously distributed and the biggest area is actually between 20 and 40 story high buildings. That's where the biggest floor area is. So I want you to learn how to code for a reason. The reason is that you're not having to do everything again and again. I want to explain to you how to make a Swiss Army knife. Create a function that is applicable for all of the cases. We have had the case where we counted the number of buildings, we counted the geometry area, we counted the floor area and geometry, but I want to have a function which works for everything. I'd like to introduce you to the next part of this. And this is that you make a function, like you have it here, we call it report general. And it not only has a, like, a case, so number of floors, but it has something called a name. We call it a name because the name is what it actually counts. So we want to have like building height, for example. The next thing is we want to have it a attribute which it takes into account, for example, the floors. So we want to have it case attribute. And the last thing is I want to tell it as well how it should increment. Should it increment by one? Should it increment by geometry? Should it do whatever? And we call it increment. This is where we generate just a very generic um, function. In the case of, we have to make a new case attribute. So we make case attribute smaller than, does something, and then we call it by a name, so we call something buildings, instead of buildings, we make it name, name plus, because that will combine the two strings, and then we should add the increment. Instead of having geometry area, we make floors here, increment. And we can do that now for all of them,
I can save this now and call exactly the same report general and then give it something. For example, the first general function. The case attribute is height and I want to increment it by, just to give it a number, make it four. I save and when I generate now again, my reports will have new attributes. Et voila. I can call that now 500 times with different elements. So I can do exactly the same thing and use floors and then increment by one. Or I can increment by geometry dot area times floors. And I'm gonna call it my the floor counter. I save it and I generate. And you can see the floor counter now works. We have here the number of observations, we have the number of these attributes, and you can see they are exactly the same as we have up here with the buildings because this is exactly the same. The report building floors is exactly the same as the floor counter. And we do just delete this because we now have generated a general applicable functions which we can use for everything we like that uses these kind of reports. We can now generate all of these different reports and look at them as a comparison. There's something called a dashboard. So when you go on to help and you write dashboard, it opens it up. And you can then create new charts. Charts are basically the combination of your reports. And you have different reports, the first floor counter and the first general function, etc. So let's count it, like floors, um, area, no, mm. area by height. Floor area is probably the best, better area. Floor area by height. And what kind? We wanna have a bar chart. Height. And we want to have it, that's it, at cart. There you go. It's the floor area in square meters for buildings below 10, two. And you can then create a bar chart which is exactly the same, but just with the buildings. So, number of buildings by height. And it shows that even though the number of buildings might be very high, the area, the floor area is quite low. The medium density is actually more available in this data set than there is a small one. So this is how you get to the point of like actually understanding how a city works because of its differences. So it depends on how you represent these elements. You can then see or interrogate what's happening in your city. And that's only possible thanks to first of all data and then reusable code. Code which is applicable in all cases.
there's going to be a link to the um, to the rule file with a couple more elements such as the differences in color and I encourage you to play around with it and think about what you actually want to represent what kind of information you think is actually informative that's it this is your first step towards coding and it's great that you're doing this because it's the tool of the future and I look forward to seeing what you're doing with it good luck